Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to the weekly intention setting meeting. We will go through an awareness practice and then think of some of our wins from last week, celebrate them, type them in the comments, then set some intentions for the coming week. Or if you have a longer vision, setting an intention. Um, yeah, so I'm feeling a bit tender today. So I think I need some oil to start with. Here, we do genius. I um I've been going through a lot of healing work and it's part of a coaching program I'm doing. So there's one announcement. I will be doing some parent coaching soon. I'm super excited, but there is so much that comes up in parent coaching that I am working through. So. I want to start with an awareness practice and jump right into my intention for the week is I am love. And that's what I want to, or that's my affirmation. I am love. I just want to keep telling myself that through all of these things, when we do, um, when we become a parent or when we start working on our parenting, um, there's a lot of shame that comes up or guilt. So I am love no matter what. And we all need to remember that. So I just want to do a quick awareness. So if you're doing this with me, I want you to close your eyes, hold your heart, feel your feet planted on the ground, sink into your spot, feel the sit bones wherever you are, grounding down into the chair or the bed or wherever you're sitting, really feeling planted. bringing awareness to the sounds of the room or your breath, feeling any sensations in your body. I feel tension, feel where you are holding anything. Breathe into it. And I want us to just think of our pure innocence, that love. We all have it. Underneath all the other stuff that we have, there is that pure love. Just like you were a young infant, just totally innocent of all the other life experiences your pure joy, your pure love. And you may feel that this is connected to some sort of source. It could be God for you, uh, whatever you call it, your source of energy, love. We can become one with that, the union of love and ourself. Really bring that love into the heart. We have that love even when we're feeling the hard times. It's always there. As thoughts come up or feelings or even stories that we're telling ourselves that we may not always be love or we may not always feel it. Come back to that, it's there. Underneath it all, there is love there. A gentle smile sometimes helps with this. Few more breaths those feelings and stories 
don't need to be judged. They're part of who we are. So see if you can look at them with curiosity as to what they're telling you, what your body's telling you, how those stories inform you, and come back to the love. Okay, I don't have my chime, but bring yourself back to the room that you're in. And I, after that awareness practice, I want to tell you why I chose to do that this week and choose I am love as the affirmation. Um, I feel like some of the wins that I've been dealing with this week have to do with that, like realizing that there are harsh parts of myself that I did not let out. So my son is teaching me that I see him, I see his, um, impatience, his need for um, constant, like he needs his word in his, you know, he wants to be seen, heard and understood. And that is me too. So when he is not getting seen, heard or understood, he is very aggressive. Um, he'll often insert himself. He won't, I start to talk, he's immediately yelling or he'll make noises to stop me from my turn to talk. Um, so that triggers something really deep for me. And I have to come into that sense of love first, or I'm going to meet him exactly where he is. And we are going to, but heads. So a win for me this week is realizing that those hard parts of him are in me too. Um, he, we are mirroring each other. So I've been reading this book too, Body Keeps the Score, and I wrote down um, something about mirroring here. So, um, so trauma, and you might, you know, there may, trauma looks in all different ways. So it doesn't mean, you know, your parents were traumatic, but trauma in our body can be from, you know, any little bit of shame or um, patterns of being told you're not enough or you're doing things that your emotions don't matter. Uh, anger is a big one. When we see kids angry, we try to solve it right away or sadness. We try to solve it right away. Um, so anyway, if you're feeling like there's something holding you back, um, it's invariably involves not being seen, not being mirrored and not being taken into account. So treatment of this or healing of this needs to reactivate your capacity to safely mirror and be mirrored by others, but also to resist being hijacked by others' negative emotions. So I am super hijacked by negative emotions. And so I am going into that place where I don't want to be part of this negative emotion and trying to fight it instead of coming into it with him. So an example today, um, he was super mad because he won't tell me what he wants. Like he put the cereal on the counter, the milk on the counter, the spoon, and then he's just going, ur, 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 and I'm starting to get triggered. It's like, I do not like that kind of behavior. So what I did was mirror it. Instead of getting angry and mad, what I did was the same thing as him. He was like, <clears throat> So I said, hmm. and then he is like, what's happening here? You know, I try to, it's not making fun of him. It's just that he's seeing that it's okay. He's seeing it in someone else. And there's a picture of me as a kid um, sitting on the side of the car. And I was just like, and my mom would always just make fun of that. Like, it just felt so shameful, that part of me, that upset part of me. <laughs> she was like, you always had this scowl on your face. And, um, you know, it's okay for us to be upset and to be able to have someone really hear us, see us and understand us. So I was just doing that with him. Hmm. And it, we just kept going back and then he'd laugh and 
Then I was like, I wonder what you need. Hmm. And finally said he was able to say it. I want my cereal. So um, it's really tricky. But um, yeah, that's something I'm working on is coming into um, not his, what other people are doing, but what is happening in my body. I can meet it with love. Um, we had a morning of that, and that's why I didn't get on my call on time today. I really want to honor like the mindfulness of being in the moment with him and with our feelings, and um, that's really tricky to go through on a day-to-day -day basis when you're not getting what you need as a parent. So when you want to help your kids through all of these emotions, you really need to have time for yourself to go through it. Self-care, time away, whatever it is that you need so you can show up fully present for them. Um, okay, what else? Oh, the vagus nerve. So um, in the 90 day challenge, the vagus nerve is super important to these stress responses. So um, if you haven't jumped into the 90 day challenge, it's around day 60 is all that week of um, working on the vagus tone, vagus nerve tone. And that's, uh, I'll read what he says, the Bessel van der Kolk. I'll read what he says about it. Um, <clears throat> The many branches of vagus nerve come in, and I'll describe its anatomy briefly because it's central to understanding how people deal with trauma or stress. The social engagement system depends on nerves that have their origin in the brainstem regulatory centers. So that's right back here. Primarily the vagus, also known as the 10th cranial nerve, together with adjoining nerves that activate the muscles of the face, the throat, the middle ear, and voice box or larynx. So when, when the ventral vagal complex runs a show, we smile when others smile, we nod our heads and we agree, and we frown when friends tell us their misfortunes. So when it's engaged, it sends signals down to our heart and lungs, slowing down our heart rate and increasing the depth of our breathing. As a result, we feel calm and relaxed, centered or pleasurably aroused. So I, when I start seeing my kids' emotions go into flight, fight or freeze response. And that's when I've lost control of my response. So if I can come into that Okay, I'm still love. I'm just feeling some emotions. What do they need right now? They need to see that their emotion is okay. I'm able to mirror it. It's the same thing when they're super excited about something. Like they come to you, they want a new toy, you're in the store, they're like, mom, please, 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 please. And you're like, no. That's the opposite of what they're feeling. So if you can meet it with excitement, oh, that is so cool. I really like that too. You must really, really want that toy. And let's talk about what we need to do to get it. Do we need to save money or can we wait to um, Easter basket? You know, so can you meet their emotion um, by first saying, okay, I'm okay. I'm safe. My, my nervous system's okay. I am love. I take a deep breath and then mirror back what they're feeling. Oh, such hard work. So that's my goal this week. It's a deep one. Super, oh, so hard to work on. Um, if, so another thing, another announcement I have is that I'm going to be opening up coaching times so that if you want to work on some of this with me, I would love it. So I'm going to be moving some things in my schedule. I wrote them down here. Um, I'm going to be having group intention setting once a month, not every week. Uh, oh, and I wore my 
shirt change is good because this is the hardest thing for kids that grew up with trauma and stress change and unpredictability and you it may not even be that um you had childhood trauma it's any time your nervous system has been stressed prolonged chronic stress then there's unpredictable unpredictability and change will totally throw you into that stress response so my husband's job changes in April that he works every other weekend that means I have to change with it um, and that does doesn't necessarily mean I have to change with it but I would have to get babysitters and things like that so I'm working on adaptability and it's been years of that but I am going to have group intention setting once a month for new moon um, and then I have my once a month full moon yoga class and then I'm opening up privates so I will have a schedule a calendar that you can book um, private yoga or private intention setting with me um, and then I'm going to be adding parent coaching so I'm not sure what that looks like yet, but at least four weeks of coaching, four or eight, um, we wanna really get into um, some sort of pattern and an agreement of how our relationship would work together. Um, but if you're looking for a one-time coaching session, I can do an intention setting meeting with you one-on-one -on -one, um, to kind of work through some of those goals that you have. Um, same thing with my kids yoga classes so I'm moving my weekly um, yoga class to once a month and I have a once a month uh, mindset chat for the kids too so I am going to be getting that all set up for the summer months April May starting in April um, and yeah I'm really excited to get the coaching started uh, let me know what um, I would really like to know your parenting goals today if you have some in when you're talking in the goals um, and how um, any parenting wins that you've had uh, let us know so we can see what's going on for other people we can mirror each other uh, really help with some of that stuff we're all going through um, yeah, so I think that's it. My affirmation is I am love. I'm going to keep coming to that so that I can sit with the hard emotions and really feel them and also come back through at the end that I am love, even with the anger, the sadness, and all of that. So I hope this makes sense. Let me know what you think. And have a great week, everybody. Namaste.